If you've just come in and switched on, you've missed the classic. Anthony Gordon giving Newcastle the lead. Virgil van Dijk showing a straight red card. Liverpool 68 minutes with 10 men. They look down and out. Nunez four minutes after coming on with an equaliser. And then in the 94th minute, he only went and won it. And that's what it meant to each and every one of them. And suffice to say, as we were watching the game uh, in the studio, just before coming back to you, there's a bit of excitement in here as well. <laughs> Mystic Michael was rather pleased with Liverpool's last-minute winner. Yeah, I don't often get excited. I <laughs> certainly don't often run anymore. How's your hamstring <laughs> after that? We're a bit worried, lads, so aren't we? <laughs> you two were firmly planted to the spot there, weren't you? Oh, dear. That just encapsulates what the Premier League's all about and what it means to, to it everyone. Was, it no was one could have predicted that. It was unbelievable. What a finish to the game. I mean, Darwin Nunez, he could, he, I think he could rightly feel a little bit aggrieved for hardly playing at all. I mean, they've played virtually everyone else, every other attacking option, and uh, and he's hardly played. But when he got a chance, wow, did he grab it. What adrenaline. Uh, the good news is uh, Michael's hamstrings are fine. <laughs> As we go live to St James's Park, Andy Robertson waiting to talk to us. Andy, well done. I mean, goodness me, that was amazing to watch. What was it like to play in at the end? What was that like, the adrenaline rush, when Darwin Nunez scores that second goal? Yeah, unbelievable. Um, you know, obviously, I think a lot of people would have wrote us off at, at half time, being down to 10 men, not playing our best football. Newcastle played well first half, they put us under pressure, they were, they were winning all the 50 50s. But, you know, slowly but surely at half time, we started to believe in ourselves. We looked around the changing room, we seen the quality we had, and, you know, we probably dipped into what happened here last season. I think we went 2 0 up, they got Nick Pope set off, and then second half, they probably dominated us, but luckily, we had the two goal cushion. So, we had to dip into that, we had to flip that. We knew we had the quality, we started keeping the ball well and all we needed was one chance and uh, luckily we got to. Your managers used the phrase mentality monsters a couple of times over the last few years. I mean, what characters does it show from the group? Everyone, all those substitutes that came on, obviously Darwin Nunez as well. Yeah, unbelievable. You know, I think that was a message at half time. We were going to need every sub in there, you know, to be so ready to come onto the pitch. And um, yeah, we needed the lads that were on the park. So. Look, Darwin came on and, you know, he caused his straight in behind. His finishing's unbelievable. And, and yeah, look, we have we have competition in that uh, in their places. You know, I, I think I heard, you know, Michael saying that he's probably not as happy not playing as many minutes so far this season. And, you know, you're probably right. But it's about showing that attitude when you come to the pitch. It's about scoring goals. It's about causing the defenders problems and, and making the manager have something to think about. And, you know, obviously Darwin done that. And I thought, you know, all the subs that came on done, um, you know, done extremely well. Andy, you mentioned the subs that, that came on. Talking of the centre halves, you've probably got your, with all due respect, your fourth choice and your sixth choice or something like that. Centre half of the, how how well did the centre half pair and play, and how difficult is that when, uh, when you know there's such a, a change around when there's a red card? I thought Joey was absolutely outstanding. Um, yeah. I thought he came on, you know, obviously in a difficult moment. We're one 0 down. We've just went down to ten men. The crowd are up, um, and it's only looking as if it's going one way. I thought Joey calmed us down. To be honest, I thought Joey started getting his foot on the ball, started playing his passes, and. I thought he was tremendous. I thought he was he was exceptional for 60, 70 minutes, however long he played. And um, the big man coming on for his Premier League debut, <laughs> um, you know, I don't think there's much tougher places and much tougher conditions, but I thought he'd done outstanding. You know, when you go 2-1 up, it's then about, you know, you've been pushing all game and it's about them flipping it and trying to hold on. And I thought, you know, they didn't have any chances after that. We limited them to chances in the second half. And, you know, when they did, I thought, you know, we called upon Ali. I thought he made some, you know, the save in the first half is absolutely ridiculous. I don't know how he's done it, and um, that keeps us in the game, and and then it allows allows us to do what we've just done. And Andy, you, you mentioned the red card there. What was your view of it? Did you have any issues with it at the time? From from where I was, I just seen him getting the ball, but I was I was blindside to it, so I didn't see if if Fudge caught his foot now or not. Obviously, that's the first time. Yeah, look, he, he obviously catches his he catches his foot, and it's difficult. He gets his he gets the ball as well. I think. You know, I think we were rightly to argue it, and I think Newcastle would have been the exact same. But, you know, did he have control of the ball? I'm not sure, but I think it, it, it does come through his foot after seeing it like that. So, look, we take it on the chin. Um, it's a lot easier sitting here now and, and talking about the red card <laughs> after a positive result than, uh, you know, maybe the way it was looking like it was going to go. So, look, we're really happy with the result. Um, you know, obviously disappointing to lose Virgil, but, um, you know, we'll deal with that. And, um, you know, we need to start playing as well with 11 men as we did 10. That's probably, you know, two games in a row now that we've played better with, with lesser men on the pitch.
And finally, Andy, you've, you've obviously got seven points out the first three games. You've gone away to Newcastle. You've gone away to Chelsea. It's not bad of a start. Yeah, not bad. Look, um, our away form last season wasn't good enough. We knew that. Um, at home, relatively, we were we were good enough, but away from home, we let ourselves down, and it's a good start. You know, four points. Chelsea was a difficult game. We we know we didn't play as well. We know you know we had obviously less possession, and they were probably hard done by not to get the win. But we dug deep, and we got a one-one draw. And then, you know, today, look, we didn't play our best. Of course, we didn't. But the determination, the desire, in the second half was was second to none. And you need that away from home, especially when you come to a place like this. The crowd are up. They're in a good moment. The fans are loving the team, and they create a special atmosphere here. And you know, we, we certainly quieted them down near the end and um, like I said, we need to continue that away form if we want to if we want to do anything this season. Very well done, Andy. Appreciate you chatting to us. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks very much, lads. Thank you. Thank you. Andy Robertson live at St James's Park for you. Uh, more Liverpool reaction now. Darwin Nunez, uh, Alisson and first of all, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Right, guys, what an extraordinary game. We're going to break with convention and do the player of the match at the start. I know Darwin doesn't speak any English, but Alisson, you're going to as well as be goalkeeper, you're going to be translator. Mm -hmm. Just ask him before he goes how extraordinary a day that was for him and what it means to be Liverpool's hero. Foi um grande dia, um extraordinário dia para ti e como como tu tu te sente aí por ter sido o homem da partida nesse jogo. La verdad que me siento muy bien, eh, muy contento este por el equipo, por la entrega de, de mis compañeros. Este, la verdad que lo hicieron muy bien eh, después de la expulsión de Berch. Quedamos con 10 jugadores y es muy difícil mantener un partido y cuando, más cuando vas perdiendo 1 a 0. Este, la verdad que supimos tener cabeza y controlar el juego y la verdad que estoy muy feliz, muy satisfecho por el trabajo que vengo haciendo y la verdad que felicitar a mis compañeros. Trent, ¿puedes translate for us? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> you think Ali, I can on. translate that? No, no he said he's, he's very happy. He said about the team. The team did a really good job after we were one last play on the pitch, after Verge got uh, the red card. And we work really hard for this, this kind of moments. Uh, and, and he said uh, mainly that he's very happy to come in and to, to help the team uh with with two goals and uh it was a great performance from from the from the team and he's re really happy we tell him well done brilliant he's the player of the match and darwin can go and see the rest of his teammates Muito bem. Parabéns pela, pela performance. Bueno, muchas gracias y esto se lo dedico a mis compañeros por la entrega uh, you say it, what you say in <laughs> <No>. <laughs> two a couple of words thank you for support <laughs> Trent, for a, a team that's done it all, even for that, I mean, what an extraordinary day. Ah, it's um, unbelievable, to be honest. It was something very special out there today. Um, you know, you, you come here with a game plan. Um, Went out the window quickly. Yeah, very quickly. <laughs> um, yeah, you come here with a game plan. You want to dictate possession. You want to control the game. You want to try and kill the atmosphere as, as quick as possible and as much as possible. Um, because, you know, that's a big advantage for them. But um, that wasn't the case. And we've had to do it the hard way, uh, the very hard way. And I think we have made it difficult, but, um, you know, out there, we dug deep. We all pulled in together. It was something for the, you know, for the ages, to be honest. One of our best performances since, you know, the managers come in and we've had some outstanding performances as a team, as individuals. But I think we'll look back on, on this game as something very, very special. Alison, within the group, do you just feel like only Liverpool could do things like that. Yeah, you cannot take uh, Liverpool uh, underestimate and even in a game like that. But to be honest, even when we play against them here last season, they they had uh, uh, one player sent off and was really hard to play against ten men. When you, you play as a unit, uh, you can do so many things on the pitch. You can make the pitch uh, be smaller uh, with the quality that we have in the team. Uh, we can do so many things, and uh, we said in the, in the change room in the halftime that we we should believe we're going to have chances, and we should uh, believe that we we are capable of doing something here uh, tonight, and we did it. I think this is uh, is on the history among uh, the so many games that we play, so many just behind Barcelona, something like that. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. I think that game, no no comparison. Uh, but this one is, is one of one of a kind. Trent, right towards the end, I think it was perhaps an injury time, you're in the corner and you just let out such an outpouring of emotion. What's going through your mind there? The, the first half an hour, perhaps? Uh, you know how difficult it is? I think um, 
you, you dig together as a team. I mean, it's, it sounds strange, but almost going down to, to 10 men, it brings the team tighter and closer together. It makes you stronger. Um, and, it, and you have to. You have to do the, the extra yards. You have to, you have to fill in the gaps. You, you, can't, you can't switch off. And we've all, we've all pulled together. Like Ali said, we spoke at half-time about uh, the belief that we had um, for what we, what we wanted to do. And, and did you genuinely believe... I mean, you, you 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 don't genuinely believe you're going to win the game, but you you know if you if you stick together, you've got chances. And I think you know the mentality at half time is, you know, you're not coming out here, you're not trying to you know score two goals straight away. You want to hang in, in into the last 10, 15 minutes, give yourself a chance, and know that they'll get tired as well, and you'll hit them on, on the counter. And I think we we've executed that game plan. We changed, and um, the lads that came on outstanding. Um, Gerald Kwanza absolutely phenomenal. In his um, in his first game for us, coming on in, in an atmosphere and an environment like this is is extraordinary. And to, to hold his own and the way he's he's performed is is outstanding. You know, everyone uh, Darwin, Harvey, um, everyone that came on was was outstanding. Just at the start, after the, the booking, which perhaps you're a bit unlucky with. The, I mean, your heart must have been in your mouth when you pulled back Anthony Gordon. <laughs> um, no, nah, then things. It's, it's always difficult, especially when you're away from home. You know, they can go against you. And, um, you know, it was a bit of a, a mistake from me. And, um, you know, it didn't help with the, the crowd on, to, on top of, of me and the team. And you you know, Just tell for people, home, because very few people have that experience where a, a really vociferous crowd like that gets on top of you and you make a mistake. How hard is it then to steady yourself? Oh, it is, of course. But, you know, luckily, me and the team are experienced in these things. We've played in, in difficult environments. We've played in difficult games, difficult situations. And we've been able to pull through. So uh, we, we knew deep down that we had a chance to, to carry on and, and go, go and perform, of course. Um, concede the, the goal. Um, they, they, um, we got a, a man sent off. But deep down, we always believed we could, we could leave with a result. Um, and to, to leave here with three points is, is a good thing and a, and a very, very difficult thing. But to do it in the way that we did was something that um, you know, we'll be very proud of them. We'll look back on this game with, with fond memories. Uh, and by them to, to have, have chances, but if they have, uh, I always say it, it to the boys, somebody needs to be closer to the shot, making it uh, more difficult to the, to the striker or who is shooting and making my life easier as well to, to read the moment. Uh, but uh, today was about passion. Today was about believing uh, to the end. Uh, like coming from after after the game, uh, we played against Bournemouth as well with uh, 45 minutes without 30 minutes without uh, without Maka, as well showed already how good uh, we could be uh, with 10 men. Uh, we have to take that now uh, forward and do that with 11 players. Uh, keep that high level. Uh, focus in in every challenge. Focus in every moment and really believe that we, we can do something uh, this season, something special this season with this, this team. So many talks around us about uh, our feelings about the, the transfer window. Uh, please don't put uh, words in our mouth. Uh, we are together, we believe in ourselves, and we show that uh, here uh, against Newcastle in a really tough, play, tough place getting the three points after the circumstances. So this is something that we have to use. It would be even better for us if we can use this forward now. Well done. Unbelievable. Thank you. Thank well you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Indeed, some battle cry uh, from mm -hmm. Alisson. As you saw, Liverpool, 42 90-plus minute winners in Premier League history, more than any other club. And Alisson, of course, in the year they won the league, got one of them with a header at West Brom in the 95th minute. But let's uh, look at the substitute impact of Darwin Nunez. Michael, it's incredible to say he was only on the pitch 18 minutes, including stoppage time. Yes. Well, as I touched on before, I mean, he can feel a little bit hard done by because he's a top-class striker bought in for a lot of money. Uh, and he's hardly had a look in already this season. He's been fit, uh, and this is the first real chance he's had. And wow, did he grab it with both hands. Do you know what? Both finishes were quite difficult. I actually was questioning as he was running through, thinking, can he score from that far out, that angle? But he absolutely struck it perfectly. He couldn't get any closer. Well, the, the obvious sure. question here is for strikers. You've been sitting on the bench in a game like that, watching, and you're expected to act straight away to get into the rhythm of a game with 10 men 
and like Michael says, very first opportunity finished like that. How difficult? I think it's one of those things when you're on the bench as a, as a, as a striker, you want to come on and you want to stake a claim for a, for an opposite, a, a chance in the side. So when you get an opportunity, you want to take that opportunity. He wasn't going to get many opportunities and that was, unfortunately, it was a little bit of a, a, a mistake by Botman to hit his next one and it clipped off his leg. But you can't take anything away from the finish. He's out wide and what you say all the time, go across the goalkeeper, hit it hard across the goalkeeper. He couldn't have struck it any purer than he did. Goes in the bottom corner. It was a great, great strike. Yeah, let's have a little look at the build-up as well. I mean, we spoke before the game, myself and Les, about the position of Trent Alexander-Arnold mm. coming in central. This is him here. And I'm just going to play this slowly because there's a lot to look at in this goal. It's a phenomenal pass from him right through the middle. So we, we pick up uh, Mo Salah at the, top of our, at the top of the screen here. This ball is about to be played right through the gap here. Look at him searching for that, right through this gap. Look at Mo, Mo Salah's pointing, isn't he? Yeah, and if we just roll it through it slightly, just keep your eye on Mo Salah. He just checks his shoulder as well. He's having a look. He's having a look what's around. There he goes. He has a little look and then watch this for a first time pass. Absolutely sublime with his weaker foot as well. Now there is a little bit of luck with the through ball. Does take a couple of little ricochets, is it Botman? Is he back and then he's Yeah, and then his heel. Uh, but it's a brilliant pass through and a brilliant little touch from Mo Salah. But what about that for a strike? There is one place in the goal he can hit that. And it's just in that bottom corner. This is another great and angle. Do you know what he does? does? He takes it early. As he takes his touch here, goalkeeper's just sitting and trying to set himself. Bang. And bang, just hits it across him. Great finish. Great. And it literally skims the goalkeeper's gloves and hits the post and goes in. It, I mean, there's... There's no other place it can go. It's a phenomenal finish with pace, with accuracy. It's just unstoppable. At that point, every Liverpool fan around the world is thinking, what a great point that is <laughs> with 10 men for 60-odd minutes at St James's Park. But Darwin Nunez thought even more. He was dreaming even further. He was. Yeah, I mean, he was. He's full of confidence at this stage, Les. You know what it's like to score a goal. You think you can score second and third. And you know, you've got to take your hat off to Liverpool. Like we said, we said at the start, the, the substitutes came on. They had an impact. Um, him, no more than Nunes, and that was a great through ball from Salah. And again, another fit. He has to lift this one, lifts it, and puts it in the same, same corner. Yeah, well, let's have a look at this goal as well. I mean, again, do you know what? Salah, mate, Salah has a huge uh, role in this because it's very subtle, but just look, when the ball bounces off Harvey Elliott, it comes to Mo Salah, and he, he knows he can't pass this straight away. He takes a little touch to the side there just to open up a little channel through to uh, Darwin Nunez and then of course it's a similar place to where he was goalkeepers a little bit further out this time but again it's a beautiful finish but that little touch from Mo Salah just opens up an angle whereby he can he can find that little corridor to play it alongside and then once you've scored one Steve it doesn't matter how hard the chance is the next time you're gonna score you're so he, full of confidence he has a little look at the goalkeeper coming out there and as he Gets, as a goalkeeper starts coming and gets his head down, knows he's going to lift it into that corner. Two great finishes and um, wins the game for, for Liverpool. Yeah. Um, let's go back to the first half because we heard from Trent Alexander-Arnold there and we also heard him talking about his yellow card and the incident afterwards in that first half. Five minutes, four seconds in. This happens. This happens and, and looking at it, when you look at it again from behind, he, he, he gets shoved in the back and it really should be a free kick to Liverpool, but it's not. And as we've seen all... At the start of this season, you throw the ball away, you're getting booked, you're getting a yellow card. So, rightly so, he gets the yellow card for throwing the ball away. But we think he should have been, it should have been a free kick. Gets the yellow card for that. And then, how many seconds later? 36, 36 seconds. seconds later, he does this. Yeah, and, and I agree with Les. I think it's a definite free kick to, uh, to Trent. And he wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have been in this position, but he was. And then once you are in that position, you've got to be very, very careful. I think he gets away with one there. I mean, he doesn't... It's not too much contact, but he's, the intent's there to try to block the run. Anthony Gordon is running away from him. He's a very, very lucky boy not to get a second yellow. What about his mentality for the rest of the game? Obviously, we're going to see the goal in a moment, but the whole game, to A, stay on the pitch, B, have an effect, and C, take the armband after yeah. the red card. Well, I'm sure Jurgen Klopp, because we saw Joe Gomez getting warmed up yeah. as soon as he made that, that second foul, and you saw a close-up of Trent Alexander-Arnold, and he had a little look, and you could see... You know, you can see that he probably thought, I'm going to come off here. So the mentality to get back into the game, get back focused. And when he didn't bring them off, of course, then that's a, an experience. That's why he's a vice captain, really, an experienced player. Got to be very, very careful after that. Because that's for the goal. Yeah. He could have been sent off, couldn't he? He could have been. Yeah. And, 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 and the reason.
reason why I thought he might have got taken off was because Gordon was having such a good time against him. But then he, he, he kind of like makes a mistake. I thought it was a tough fullback from Salah on his, on his left foot, but he makes the mistake, grabs hold of uh, Gordon's shirt. But Gordon sees an opportunity to go and score a goal and stays on his feet and perhaps keeps uh, uh, Alexander Arnold on the pitch. Mm. Yeah, let's have a look at the, uh, the goal again from a different angle. I mean, it's a really tough ball he's got to control from Mo Salah, but he's got to do better. It is his, uh, it is his fault. A bad first touch. It was a bad first touch of his against uh, Bournemouth as well um, for, for, for their goal at Anfield not so long ago. And there it is. There's the grab. We don't really need to magnify it, but, but we will. A full hand of, uh, of, of um, his shirt there. And if he had gone down, then he sent off. But... Anthony Gordon does well, stands on his feet, and it's an assured finish in the end. But yeah, Trent Alexander-Arnold had a bit of a nightmare first period to the game, and uh, and he gets away with it, and then develops into the game. And as I say, quite influential as well in one of the goals. Yeah, um, and then of course on 27 minutes, uh, the big talking point of that first half when Liverpool lost their captain Virgil Van Dijk, and Les, even in real time, you called this. Yeah, I, I did because. What it, what it felt like was that it felt like Isaac had got in front of, of Van Dyke, and the only way Van Dyke could get to the ball was going through Isaac, and that's exactly what he did. And I saw it first time, and the more I saw it, the more I realised that yeah, he he got the player before he actually got the ball. I don't like the rule because I think it, you know a yellow card and a free kick there would have been suffice. But the rules are if it's goal scoring opportunity, because I think Isaac's next touch takes him into having a shot at goal. Yeah, well, and I agree with, with uh, Les there because I, when I first saw it, I thought, is it a foul? I'm not quite sure. Uh, but then when we see the replay of it, then I think it's fair to say it's a, it is a red card in my opinion and in Les's for that matter. That's not a bad angle, but it's this last angle that I think is, uh, is the best one, Steve. You can clearly see. Here we go. We'll just slow it down. Watch this. Virgil van Dijk definitely touches Isaac's foot before getting the ball. And I think that's the key. The right foot here of Van Dijk there before it hits the ball. And I think when you break it down, say, does, it, does he get the player before the man? The answer is yes. So then that's a foul. And then when you take a step back and think, right, well, if it's a foul, is it a goal scoring opportunity? And I think you've got to say yes again. So sadly for Virgil van Dijk, it's a red card. Dan McGallagher, uh, did you call that in real time or did you need a few looks? No, I think instinct as a referee would tell you that, Steve. Um, the first thing is, does he get the ball? Well, quite clearly, as Michael's just shown on the video, it's he gets uh, he, uh, he gets uh, the player first. It's a foul. There's no doubt about that. This, if you watch here, once he gets in front of him, once Isak gets in front of him, he's got the advantage. So there, he takes the leg out. So it's a foul. Is it outside the area? Yes. So once it's outside the area, it becomes a, a red card offence. In the area, he may get away. They may, may be able to say, "Well, he made a genuine attempt to play the ball," but that rule is overlooked once it's outside the penalty area. So therefore, a red card. The referee has no option. So, so, David, so you're saying in 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 the, in the penalty area, it would have just been a penalty and not a red card. A yellow card, because yellow uh, card. if if you go to make a tackle in the penalty area, they don't want the double jeopardy of right. penalty and red card. So therefore, that's becomes a yellow card. But that's all you have to ask, Les. Is is it a foul? Yes. Is it outside the penalty area? Yes. He's bearing down on goal, as you quite rightly said. You know, his next touch takes him away from Van Dyke towards goal. Therefore, it's a goal-scoring opportunity. So, so an excellent right piece of refereeing by John Brooks for you there. Yeah, I think that's uh, first class because we've looked at it and, you know, we, we all said, said it was a red card, but we've looked at it in slow motion. We've looked at it three or four times from different angles. John Brooks had one look, made his decision. I think it's absolutely spot on. And what about Trent Alexander-Arnold? Let's look <laughs> at the two incidents, uh, Dermot. The obvious question is, was he a lucky boy? Well, ultimately, he was a very lucky boy, but he, he was also unlucky, wasn't he? Because I don't think there's any doubt whatsoever he's fouled. Yeah. Now, that doesn't exonerate well, once what he's Once he's been done. given a yellow, what about this? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, once, I mean, that's a yellow card in its own right, isn't it? You know, it's, it's breaking up a promising attack. He's made no attempt to play the ball. So it's a yellow card. And I think the minute it happened, immediately I thought, well, he's off here. You know, six minutes gone, you know, he's going to get red card, but he didn't. Has the fact that it's six minutes in have any bearing on it in the referee's mind? Well, it shouldn't do, Steve, and I don't think it does. I just think the referee's misread it, whether he's felt that it's too far upfield, it's not promising attack, or whether he's felt that there's not enough contact. But when you see it like we see it, you know, Gordon's away, there's no doubt about that. He's got yards and yards and yards in front of him. He's, he's away with the ball. 
it is a foul. It's quite clearly a foul. He hasn't gone to play the ball, so it should have been a second yellow card. Dermot, thank you very much indeed for clearing that up. Goodness me, there's so many people to talk to uh, after this game and so many things to talk about. Eddie Howe has still only beaten Liverpool once as a Premier League manager. He thought he had it today. It was a roller coaster for him. Here's what he thinks at full time. Eddie, really difficult to come out and talk after that. Lots of emotions, I'm sure. What can you say about what you've seen? Yeah, I mean, th th there was a lot of good. Um, we should have put the game to bed. And that's probably the thing we're all kicking ourselves with. Um, we had chances, a lot of goal mouth action uh, in their box. The goalkeeper made a, one of the best saves I've seen live. Uh, from Almiron? Yeah, from Almiron. And uh, it just wasn't to be for us. So, I mean, if you're critical at all, not ruthless enough? Yeah, there was moments there for us. We, we needed the second goal because Liverpool are dangerous. And you know when they're making the subs, they're bringing good players on, world-class players on. And you know that uh, it only takes a chance, even with 10 men and they're... Uh, they're such a good counter-attacking team. We're really unlucky again with the, their first goal that hits Sven's back and then his heel and lands perfectly for Nunes. It's a, it's a great finish, but those are the small things that go against you sometimes and it did for us. Would you also or perhaps argue that your best football came against 11 men rather than 10? Yeah, I think sometimes that happens um, for whatever reason. That wasn't our intention to um, slow anything down or to not continue the momentum that we had in the game but it just then Liverpool become content for you to have the ball in front of them there's less space and it was it was tough for us to, to break them down there um, they defended well we had the chances though and that's the thing that we're frustrated with does it become a mental challenge for players whether to stick or twist well I know uh, our message at half time and the players intent was to, to try and score again and put the game to bed with that second goal and the moments and the chances were there right to the end but um, yeah, we just couldn't get that killer second goal. And then you're on a knife edge to a degree. The later the game goes, that one moment could hurt you. And um, that's what happened. It was a really stormy opening to the game, maybe an opening half an hour. Trent Alexander-Arnold, lucky to stay on the pitch? For me, yes. Um, you don't want to see players sent off, but for me, that's a, a clear red card. Yeah, and what, and what about the situation with Virgil van Dijk? Clear as well? I think so. I think Alex is going through one-on-one -on -one at that moment, and um, he's brought down... Um, so, yeah, two, two moments that are key in the game, and I thought the referee got the first one wrong. Yeah, so you look at that and think, I mean, I suppose you have a long time against 10, so you'd expect better from your team, but obviously against 9, it's even easier. Yeah, I, mean, I think we're not looking at that as the reason why we didn't win the game. Uh, let's be clear, that has to fall on our laps, but still, um, yeah, these are moments that at that moment in time was frustrating for us. How big a challenge now to, to pick the players back up after that, Eddie? Yeah, I mean, I think there will be uh, a lot of emotion, as you said at the start of the interview. I think um, for us, we've had three games, three really tough games. We've won one of them, we've lost two, and the two we've lost, we've lost by the narrowest of margins. So against the, you know, the best teams in the Premier League. Yeah, very difficult one uh, to take for Newcastle. Let's go to St James's Park, the former Newcastle striker, Shola Amiobi, waiting to talk to us. It's all the Liverpool fans at the end. Uh, Shola, what was it like from a new Newcastle point of view? How hard to take right at the death? Yeah, the curse of uh, Liverpool strikes again. Um, it's been it's been so long since uh, Newcastle have have won a game. I think against Liverpool, and uh, obviously, clearly, the second half wasn't you know what we expected. The players obviously worked hard and tried, but I, I thought there was a little bit of hesitancy in that second half, trying to protect uh, the lead. And it's it's always difficult when you do that against such a a top side like Liverpool, you know, where we've got players who can come off the bench and, and strike at any moment. And uh, yeah, it was like Eddie said there, it was just disappointing that we, we didn't, we didn't, you know, put our foot on the gas in, in that second half. And, you know, if you don't do that, you're going to get uh, burnt in this league. And, uh, you know, that's what happened. With the chances they had showed her at 1-0 in the second half, should they have put it to bed? Yeah, I mean, clearly it's, it, you know, you're playing against 10 men, you know, you're in the ascendancy, you're at home. Uh, in generally, you look at the chances that we've created, certainly, you know, the first game of the season, we put everything away. And obviously, if this goes in, I mean, it's, it's game over. Um, that was unlucky. That was a, such a great run. Uh, but you have to say, you look at the one that, that Alisson saved in the, second in the first half, you know, one of the best saves I've ever seen live. And, and then you look at, obviously, he's, he's running through here and you think, you know, square it, up, square it to you know Wilson uh, but we had two we had enough chances to um, to put the game away and that's the disappointing thing for Newcastle I think it's it's important that you know they regroup you know these are this type of games you know for Liverpool where you know it can really make it your season you know you can resurrect it and um, 
and and on the flip side you know for Newcastle you know it's it's it's, it's, it's just a deflating defeat you know in a game that you know quite clearly they should have won but we saw their character last season didn't we um, and mentality I mean it's an early season test of that again here now yeah absolutely listen Eddie Eddie knows um, what he's got in that dressing room you know it's, it's obviously clearly a disappointing result it's it's a result you know I've come to I've come to be accustomed to to be honest um, uh, but that's that doesn't take away from what they're trying to do what they're trying to build and like you say w there was enough in that game for Newcastle to win it um, they just didn't take the chances and you know when you're playing against the Liverpool side who are who are down like that and you know who are who've got so much experience um, in the side uh, like you, you guys have mentioned you know you have to be on your toes and and quite clearly you look at the two goals at the score I think it was that was the only two shots they had on target and it was just clinical and that was the difference today um, you know in the final third Great to speak to you, Shola. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Indeed. guys. Uh, despair and defeat for Newcastle then. Sheer elation for Liverpool and their manager, Jurgen Klopp. Well, Jurgen, I know I'm speaking to the guy whose team came from 3-0 down against Barcelona, but <laughs> is that one of the great wins for you as a coach? Definitely. Definitely. Much more. It was more difficult than the Barcelona game. Really? Yeah, of course, because it was the Barcelona game was at home. We played a sensational first game, lost it 3-0, but knew a lot about ourselves and a lot about, about how we can hurt Barcelona if we defend them properly. Today is completely different, so we didn't start particularly well into the game. We um, conceded a goal, get a red card, um, and then actually we played better from that moment on. We played better, we were much more controlled, we gave them and obviously Newcastle struggled now with creating properly because we were now more compact um, and fought really hard. So half time the feeling was there that something is possible, yes, with a special performance, with a super attitude, desire, passion, all these kind of things, then something is possible here with a bit of luck as well. Don't think we needed too much luck. Um, we calmed the game down. And brought then Darwin. <laughs> 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 yeah, he was obviously fired up by um, not playing, not starting, and um, put all the energy in in these two shots. We could have scored before. Huh? We had really good chances. We had really good football moments, like Diogo and Mo and stuff like this. Really good. Um, yeah, it was a super mature performance and two top top class goals. Yeah, you mentioned Darwin there. Could that change everything for him yep. in the red shirt? Uh, it has everything okay. The, the problem, at, it, I really, I, I, I understand the question and stuff like this. It's clear and he's not happy. How can a player be happy when he's not starting? The thing is, it's early in the season. We need to find stability. We need to find a formation. We need to get results. And then we play anyway all three days and everybody will play. So there's no doubt about that. And not even not, and if Darwin would have started the first three games, he would not play more games afterwards because of the intensity he can't. So we need to get everybody in. We need to find a, a way of play again. And that's what we, are, what we try to create. This is a completely new team in the new key players. That's how it is. And so that needs time. And so yes, for him, definitely a striker scores two goals. And he, 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 he needs, us. I don't know what, to get a smile out of his face, rightly so. But um, for the team, it was super important that we got something like that. You need these kind of things to grow together and uh, you cannot create it, you have to force it pretty much and, and the boys did that today and <laughs> oh my god how much I enjoyed that <laughs> in the last second and the second goal and half time we said if this, if we can turn this then it's really something we can tell our grandkids and I see mine in 10 days so I will tell them. <laughs> so I know you said you believed at half time. But at one point, I mean, Trent could have been sent off. Uh, Virgil obviously was sent off. Are you thinking everything's going against us? This is unraveling. I had a first goal, obviously. I mean, we don't have to talk. And I think Trent feels it. It's, oh my God. Do so you think a close red card affects then what happens to him next? You know, that storm that's within the yeah, stadium. Everything. So, so first and foremost, I think, OK, so when Trent gets a yellow card, it's a clear foul on him.
for the first one. Yeah, yeah. clear fog on him. Everybody would. Even before the field said, oh, but it doesn't get whistled. Trent is like, should he kick the ball? No, definitely not. But first it's a foul on Trent. So whistle it and nothing happens. So the <laughs> red card we just have to need to have another look, I'm pretty sure. So on, uh, there's no active contact from Birch. It's a contact, I think, but there's no active going. It's just going for the ball, and on the way there, they cross the path. And with this soft touch on, and it, everybody said that wherever we should not get soft penalties anymore. And all of us last year, the first soft penalty we, we get uh, was against us when Arsenal were up. After they got a, um, an apology for that, but it doesn't help. For this contact, getting three games would be oh my god, unbelievable. But we will see. We will see for today. Um, it at least gave us the chance to create something really special. What might not have happened in 11 11 because the boys pulled a, f a proper fight out of the locker. And um, I love that um, a lot, to be honest. How is Virgil in the dressing room? He must be enjoying that victory yeah, more than anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's really thankful <laughs> uh, to anyone. He should be, anyway. Uh, all good. But it's, it's nice. The story's around. The days will come on. Uh, Kwanzaa today is not not a game. It's a what a game. <laughs> you come on, Joey um, um, came on early. Played a super game. A really a super game. Really happy for him. Um, again, from a specific point of for for end obviously catastrophe again. <laughs> There's no clue what we actually do, and how we get a little bit where is my and then bam again ten man. You might think it's a tactic that you really <laughs> want to play with. That. <laughs> Absolutely. So, but then Maka and uh, uh, and Dom again on double six later on a really super. Then Harvey there, Mo, pff, what a shift, really brutal. Diogo came on super super impact. So, because it was super difficult, then sometimes sometimes. Um, these kind of stories get written, and um, so I'm happy with that. But obviously, I would have, uh, um, yeah, be much more happy if we can finish a game with 11 and win it. That would be cool. So, lastly, this is something you touched on. How big a day do you think this is for the reboot for uh, the new team? Uh, well, come on, we don't have to. I have no clue what it will mean for that. But in a moment, that's absolutely great. I can't remember. I, I never. No, with ten men in my history, with more than thousand games, I never, sorry, <laughs> had I never had something like that. So I in that way, at Newcastle, in this stadium, with the atmosphere, stuff like this, absolutely crazy. So I never had that, and that means something. So it's super special. What it means, I have no clue. Next week is Aston Villa. They are strong like crazy. So we have to be ready again. That's what we will try. Uh, I know I said lastly, but just one more if I can. How important is it that you hang on to Mo Salah? I know you sort of tried to put that story to bed on Friday, but it hasn't quite gone away. For me, it has. Okay. <laughs> and that's that. Um, you can see <laughs> just what it means to Jurgen Klopp. He says in over a thousand games, he's never had a scenario like that. And as you alluded to at the full time whistle, one to tell his grandkids about. And that's coming from a man who's won everything. Yeah, well, you know, in this job, you try to be balanced about it and control your emotions. But even then, I was, I, I just had the feeling that, that that was something special we witnessed there. And, you, you know, you just don't come back. With ten men against a really strong team away from home, when things aren't going great, you know, and you, you might have been down to nine men and, and all these things, you know, you've got a young kid making his debut at centre-half in a crucial position. You, Joe Gomez hasn't kicked the ball for a while. You know, that, that, that's the other centre half. Just things were just going wrong, and how they've pulled that out the fire. And you just, I just sensed at the time that is special. It's a special result, and you could see. Did you see Trent Alexander Arnold's re reaction at the end? Mm. Jurgen Klopp to the fan, the players. They were on the pitch celebrating like they'd won a Champions League final. It was quite incredible. And to get seven points out of that, that was a tricky start for Liverpool. Away at Newcastle, away at Chelsea. Um, you know, that's a, a good return, seven points out of nine, with a brand new midfield as well. We saw those chances for Newcastle with Sherlock. What we didn't see was Alisson's save again, which is worth seeing, because Almiron thought he'd scored, and that would have been with ten men game over. Yeah, I think we all thought Almiron had scored. Um, this is just an unbelievable save, it, uh, uh, well, save the season so far, and it will, it will be in there come the end of the season, because... One of the greatest saves he's seen live, Sherlock said. I'm telling you, he's hit the ball with absolute... He couldn't hit any, be any better than he did. And 
even when he got his gloves wet, I thought this is in the back of the net. But it was a sensational save and um, kept them in the, in the game at, uh, at 1 0. Just so many moments, weren't there, oh. like that in the game that you know Liverpool you, will look back on. Yeah. When you look at when you look at this Liverpool side, I think there's always pivotal games, and I know we're early in the season. But as he said, it's a new team um, that they've, he's brought together, and they're all learning things. And today they would have learned a massive lesson about each other in terms of how they take this on. Okay, you might go to Aston Villa and lose next week, but I think that this will be a pivotal turning point for Liverpool because you know there's been a lot of criticism about Liverpool and their transfer dealings at the start of the season that they haven't done things quite right. But for those players today. That would be a massive turning point. And in terms of strikers, sometimes we've seen over the years a certain game, a certain moment can kickstart a player's career. Could those 17 minutes on the pitch today do that for Liverpool and Darwin Nunez? I think so. As I say, you don't want to get too carried away with everything and think everything's now perfect. But I've said on this show dozens of times, as you well know, Steve, there's mm. something about this lad that I absolutely love. He's direct, he's quick, he's strong, he's got an unbelievable shot on him. He's a brilliant volleyer of the ball. I mean, there's lots to like. Now, he is quite raw still, and it does worry me, but I think with the right coaching and with a bit of time, this kid could be really, really good. It, listen, it might backfire, he might not, but uh, I think he's got the raw ingredients to be really good. And he just needs that confidence, he's confidence he just needs that belief in him. Um, from the manager and from his teammates and, and things like that. But he's a very willing runner. And I just think he's, uh, I think he could be top class. And it might take a little bit of time. Remember someone like Didier Drogba when he first signed, first came to the Premier League. Everyone laughed at him for the first year. His touch was everywhere. He couldn't score. And then look what we saw. One of the best players we've ever seen in the Premier League. And I'm not saying he's going to be Drogba standard, he, but he might be. Mm. He's got the raw ability to be. Well, he, he's obviously following in Luis Suarez's uh, steps at Liverpool as a Uruguayan. Mm. Um, but he's got that street footballer look about him, Les, hasn't he? Yeah, certainly. With the tattoos and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> no, he has got a street footballer. And uh, you picked up a, a great point when you said, could this be the making? Um, what he's shown here is in, in the tough circumstances, he can score goals, he can keep his cool and score goals. And that's the most important thing. You need opportunities, you need chances. And he's put himself back into the shop window to, to start games for Liverpool. And hopefully, he'll draw confidence from those two goals and go on from here. Yeah, he's, he's got attributes that, that you can't give people, Steve. You can't, that directness, that attitude that you talk about, that South American attitude, the, the will to win. Uh, he's got little attributes that I just look and I absolutely adore. As I say, you'd pay millions for, for those different attributes. He just, almost the easy things he struggles with. And I think a little bit of good coaching around him. And the funny thing is, you normally, with a rough diamond like him, you normally expect to be paying you 30, 40 million, mm -hmm. try to develop something into a 100 million pound player. They've paid actually full whack for him. I was expecting a more rounded player. Liverpool haven't got that but they have got something that could be special, could be in the future. Just to round off then, are you interested to see now Newcastle's reaction, Brighton away next, if they can respond straight away? Yeah, we was hoping to respond today, and I think for, for 45 minutes, they, they looked at the better side. Um, uh, this was always going to be a test, in the same way it was going to be a test for Liverpool to see where they are. You know, Newcastle, the up-and-coming team, everyone's looking at Newcastle and saying, right, OK, what are they going to do this season? Now's a, a big test for them. They've had two against arguably two of the best teams in the division, um, they've still shown that they're still a little bit away from being where they want to be. And in terms of Liverpool, Jurgen Klopp says they need to grow together, this young team. What can a result in that fashion do for a new team and a new set of players like that? Well, normally, as Les mentioned it before, the lessons they will have learned today, normally you learn your lessons in defeat. You know, it really hurts and you, you learn quick. I think Liverpool will have learned a lot, lot of lessons today, uh, a lot about themselves with a brand new midfield, with new players that have come in, uh, a couple of injuries, suspensions, things like that, and they've still come in, learnt the lessons and got a win, which is uh, equal. I think we all need to lie down after that in one way or another. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed for your company. Listen, it's if you needed reminding why we all love the Premier League, quite simply, today was that. See you next time.